Good morning. We are happy to welcome our parishioners and guests to St. Joseph's as we celebrate the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. These are today's announcements. Beginning next weekend, July 4th and 5th, the tape will be removed from the pews. The tape was never one of Bishop's instructions. We did this on our own to assist the parishioners on where to sit. But we will still be following Bishop Folda's guidelines on social distancing. Please use your own discretion when seating yourself and your families. Be conscious of the person you are sitting next to. Also, next week, communion will be distributed from the center aisle instead of coming up from the sides. Please see bulletin for more information. Starting July 1st, confessions will be held in the confessionals, not in the Adoration Chapel. Altar servers. Starting next weekend, two altar servers will be scheduled for each weekend Mass. If you are not yet comfortable with serving Mass during this time, please call Sherry at the parish office as schedules will be mailed out this Tuesday. Thank you. St. Joseph's School is looking for a bus driver. This would be a great part-time gig for someone. Call the school between 9 a.m. and 12 p.m. for more information. Let us prepare our hearts to celebrate Holy Mass. Good morning to all of you who are gathered here at the St. Joseph Church and to all of our folks who are watching on um, uh, Facebook Alive. So we're glad you could join us for this uh, important celebration today for the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. I'm a little bit nervous. This is the first time I've been able to do this um, online here. So be, bear with me, I guess. Uh, today, our special intention is for the deceased Dorothy Pung. And bring your own intentions, of course, to this Mass as well. Shall we begin? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We seek the Lord's forgiveness for our sins as we acknowledge our weakness before God asking God to help us to make this truly a worthy celebration. I confess to Almighty God. 
and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be the children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. One day, Elisha came to Shunem, where there was a woman of influence who urged him to dine with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he used to stop there to dine. So she said to her husband, I know that Elisha is a holy man of God. Since he visits us often, let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp, so that when he comes to us, he can stay there. Sometime later, Elisha arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Later, Elisha asked, Can something be done for her? His servant, Gehazi, answered, Yes. She has no son, and her husband is getting on in years. Elisha said, Call her. When the woman had been called and stood at the door, Elisha promised, This time next year you will be fondling a baby son. The word of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The promises of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, My kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Blessed the people who know the joyful shout. In the light of your countenance, O Lord, they walk. At your name they rejoice all the day, and through your justice they are exalted. 
forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. You are the splendor of their strength, and by your favor our horn is exalted. For to the Lord belongs our shield, and to the Holy One of Israel our King. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ raised from the dead dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his apostles, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink because the little one is a disciple. Amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord Tonight, today, I would like to um, address the uh, topic of hospitality because it's such a critical, I think, value, you know, in our society today, maybe even more so now than previous years. And it's a common theme running through the scriptures for today's Mass on the 13th Sunday. Hospitality was very critical for the Jews, for them to know that they could as they were traveling through the desert, you know, to be able to expect somebody to be uh, welcome them and help them, help meet some of their needs. Maybe as they were traveling through a desert where there was awfully dry, very little water, 
or accommodations for them. And even in the time of Christ himself, he who traveled with his disciples by foot, often accepted the hospitality of the people around him. And so I think it is a, a common theme and a common value for all peoples, not just the Jewish or Christian. And here we are celebrating the 4th of July next weekend, and this throughout this next week. And it's the uh, birthday of our nation, isn't it? The 4th of July. And uh, so we're celebrating our origin. And we think about the beginnings of our country. How many people traveled from all these different nations to this United States of America. This land of freedom and opportunity. It was, of course, at one time we talked about the United States as being a melting pot for all races, for all peoples, and religious people differences. So hospitality in this country was exceptionally important. It is described, hospitality, as a friendly and generous welcome. You know, when you uh, either drive, leave town here in Devil's Lake, you will notice that there are signs out there at the uh, entrances called, Welcome to Devil's Lake. Huh? We have greeters, people that help and assist us at Mass to help us feel, find a place here to sit. Very important, probably even more so now than ever. Greeters to welcome us. And um, we also told, Jesus says something about, and your reward, he says, will not, not, you will not lose your reward for being hospitable. We must keep that in mind because sometimes hospitality isn't that easy to be a hospitable person. But there are great rewards. Take, for instance, the first reading for today in the Mass from the um, uh, Book of Kings. It talks to us about Elisha. You know, Elisha, one of the prophets of the Old Testament, he was a disciple of Elijah, one of the major prophets, one of the great prophets of Israel. Well, anyway, Elisha did his work, and he was traveling, you know, and uh, went through this little town called Sunem. It's in the northern Israel, near in the, what they call the area of the Galilee, close to Nazareth, where, where Mary and Joseph lived. So anyway, he was st he would stop at this one place often, and uh, the um, family there, the couple, husband and wife, the wife said, you know, why don't we set up a place for this prophet and he could stay at our house instead of just coming by for a cup of coffee or tea, whatever they did. He says, why don't we fix him a place where he could stay? And they did. Now, they were an affluent couple. They had a nice house, apparently. But they were no children. They were childless. And so because of that hospitality and that welcome, the prophet promised them, next time when I come through here next year, you will have a baby boy. Can you imagine the delight in that family? Now, it also happened later on that that boy died. But the prophet, Elisha, raised this boy to life also. So they were doubly blessed by their hospitality to Elisha. Jesus instructs his disciples in the gospel today of how important it is, you know, to welcome and to be hospitable. And how, what a challenge it can be. Now, first of all, of course, he was talking about families, you know. He says, whoever loves family, father and mother and children more than me is not worthy of me. That's a hard one for us to accept. But, you know, we know the commandments. You need to love God first and foremost. We love our neighbor as ourselves. But we need to have our priorities. 
But ten times Jesus uses the word whoever. Whoever wants to follow me. Or whoever gives even a, a cup of cold water to this little one because he is a disciple will not go without a reward. Jesus said this because he believed and he knew that every human being has dignity, respect, and deserves respect. Even those in prison, the criminals, those that we would consider bad people, maybe, still have dignity. The Lord made no conditions. Well, we need to be welcoming. And Paul today in the second reading talks about baptism. And you know, baptism is really a sacrament of welcome. We had two children baptized last night, two Litzinger children. And that is a time when we welcome a child into the body of Christ, into the, the chosen people through that wonderful ceremony of baptism. Paul here talks about baptism in a more, what you would call a broader sense. He said those who have been baptized into Christ have been baptized into his death. And if we have been baptized into his death, we have received a new life. We must live as Christians, as believers, as a result of our baptism. We cannot go back on that. That cannot be erased from our soul. Once baptized, always baptized. That's God's assurance that he wants to welcome us into, into his holy people. <coughs> you know the Benedictines who used to uh, take care of this parish for many, many years before your diocesan priests, um, you know, became your uh, spiritual leaders here. But the Benedictines... Uh, they were followers of St. Benedict, and that tradition goes back 1,500 years, you know. But the Benedictines have a motto, receive all guests as you would receive Christ. And so that's always been their motto, to receive everyone, all guests, as you would receive Christ himself. And isn't that what Jesus said when he says in the Gospel of Matthew, Whatsoever you do for the least of my brothers or sisters, you do for me. That's hard to do sometimes with some of the people that are part of our lives or that we confront. Whatever you do to the least, you do to me and for me. So anyway, I think it's a wonderful motto. The Benedictines have been, you know, very strong in that area. And we have Benedictine communities now down in Bismarck at Annunciation Priory at the University of Mary. And also the Benedictines at Assumption Abbey in Richerton. I went to school there for two years of college in my preparation for the priesthood. And also these Benedictine uh, sisters in Dickinson as well. But I was particularly touched when I, this past week, when I heard about the death of one of the sisters at the Annunciation Priory in Bismarck, Sister Thomas Welder, a North Dakota gal who became the first president, woman president, uh, particularly of the University of Mary, at that time called Mary College. But she did so much to help build up the University of Mary, and she passed away this past Monday because of kidney cancer. She'd been battling that for years. And the thing about Sister Thomas Welder was that throughout her life, and one thing in particular, she would remember people that she had met a long time, years ago, could call people by their first name. I know that that happened in my own life. She, was, she knew people. She, she really cared about us. She, that's why she was so effective, I think, as a PR person, public relations, for the University of Mary and helped so much in its growth. And so it wasn't just something she did, it was who she was. And I'm sure her funeral will be, um, um, a lot of people will be there in prayer and spirit, if not in person. 
There's another sister from that community that I've gotten to know a little bit. Her name is Sister Kathleen Atkinson. The Atkinsons is a big family name down in Bismarck. I know there's an Atkinson Park there, and, and uh, Sister's brother has done a lot of missionary work in Guatemala and in Africa. But Sister Kathleen Atkinson felt that there was a need to do something in the, for the state in Bismarck for those who are on the margin. And so she started a program called Ministry on the Margins. It's an ecumenical setting. It started in 2013, 2013, about seven years ago. And she has um, um, made this her mission as a sister to uh, help welcome people who are either um, coming from prison, trying to go through a transition in their life, or are displaced, you know, in a society, offering them food, and even shelter. I know I have a brother down there who recently uh, lost his apartment, and uh, they put him up in a motel for a week until he could get a new apartment. So I'm indebted to the sister and the ministry on the margins. It's run by donations and charity and that, but I think Sister Kathleen just exemplifies again this great spirit of hospitality that is so prevalent. I know after the first Mass, one of the parishioners said, Sister uh, uh, Thomas Welder and some of the sisters sang at our wedding. So they were quite honored by that. So there's a great reward for being hospitable. Jesus made that very clear in the closing words of today's gospel. Amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. I hope we believe that. Here we are, close to the 4th of July, and um, again celebrating the birth of our nation, that as American people, we always need to know, look back at our origins, our beginnings, and realize what made this country so great and we'll continue, whatever President Trump says, to be great, you know. We know that being hospitable and welcoming, you know, people in our lives, in our communities, and uh, to our nation. Whoever, Jesus said ten times, whoever. We don't know who they are, but we are to welcome all as we would welcome Christ himself. And in that way, yes, it's not easy. It's a real challenge. And that's why Jesus said, there's a great reward, you know, by being faithful to him, to his teaching. Faithful to him who comes to us. Jesus who came into our world to reveal to us a hospitable God who loves all his children, all his creatures, and all of creation. And someday he wants to welcome each and every one of us into our heavenly home. Whatever you have done to the least, you have done to me. Please join in praying now our Nicene Creed. If you need the words, they're in the inside cover of your missalette. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, 
was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Knowing that we are God's people, his chosen ones, we dare to bring before our God these prayers and petitions. For the Holy Catholic Church, that the world may receive Jesus through us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in medical care and the medical sciences, may God continue to give them the knowledge, skills, and compassion to care for the sick and seek ways to end this pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are far from God and his church, May Christ's message of love and healing penetrate their hearts and reconcile them to him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a safe celebration of the 4th of July weekend, especially on the lake, and for safety throughout our summer, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For contributions to our parish, that through the small sacrifices of our people, we may be able to pay our staff and continue our work of strengthening the Catholic faith in our community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Radley Ann Litzinger and Reagan June Litzinger, who will be baptized this weekend, may the Holy Spirit lead them throughout their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in our parish, especially Kim Helton, and for Dorothy Pung, whom this Holy Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray also for our farmers and ranchers and for those who are taking care of God's creation, for God's blessing upon our growing crops for protection from disastrous storms that we always be able to use the gifts God gives to us to help the world we pray to the Lord, Lord hear eternal father grant us the request that we dare bring you now through Christ Jesus our Lord please be seated
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that by the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished a marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way when supper was ended. He took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. And may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and John our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We stand with Christ and pray to our Heavenly Father in the words that he has given to us, and so we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take the grace of the Lord.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under me. prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. body of Christ the 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 body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 The body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ.
body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ. 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 body of Christ the 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 body of Christ body of Christ body of Christ the body of Christ the body of Christ body of Christ the body of Christ the body of Christ the body of Christ the body of Christ
Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity we may bear fruit that lasts forever through Christ our Lord. God bless you. This is probably, uh, again, one of our larger um, attendances, so uh, good to see people so anxious to come to the Lord and let the Lord welcome you. I want you to say a special prayer for a former associate parochial vicar from your parish, Father James Cheney, who was here for a couple of years when he was first ordained. He's currently a pastor at St. Paul's Newman Center in Fargo, and uh, been there, I think, about 12 years now, and has really um, loves what he's doing, and he's doing a great job trying to build a new complex and everything else for the Bison Catholics. So uh, his celebration is this afternoon at 4 o'clock. They're having a 25th anniversary mass and a gathering of friends, relatives, priests, and deacons of the diocese. So keep uh, Father Jim in your prayers that he would continue to do. You know, the Newman Centers are really places of hospitality. How important it is for students who go off to college and find a place, a home, a second home in a sense, for them, you know, they can continue to grow in faith, in hope and love. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, proclaiming and glorifying the Lord by your lives.